Misunderstandings abound everywhere, not least in the Philippines. We've previously touched on subjects such as industrialization and foreign reserves. However, a critical subject yet to be discussed is the misunderstanding revolving around the Philippine peso. The nation's currency is a hotly debated topic. There's a common belief that the peso has significantly depreciated over the years. Some people recall a time when it was on par with the US dollar, only to witness its continual devaluation. Historical records often state that the peso once held a 2 to 1 ratio with the dollar, meaning 2 pesos would be equal equal to one dollar. According to popular narrative, this ratio eventually plummeted to 50 pesos to a dollar. And as of the time this was written, it's approximately 55 pesos. Hence, the controversy and the burning question. Why has the peso depreciated so significantly? And is it necessarily a bad thing? Does a weaker peso imply outright negativity? Let's delve in and explore. Let's first clarify the basics before we delve into the reasons behind the Philippine peso's current depreciation and the potential benefits of a weaker currency. The value of a country's currency, including the Philippine peso, is influenced by several factors such as interest rates, inflation, political stability, and an overall economic performance. A robust currency is traditionally seen as a positive sign, yet a weaker one can also bring benefits under specific circumstances. For instance, a weaker peso makes imported goods costlier, necessitating more pesos to purchase the same quantity of foreign currency for imports, such as the US dollar. This can result in a shift towards local goods and services, stimulating domestic industries and job creation. Moreover, a weaker peso can protect local industries against inexpensive imports, crucial for emerging economies like the Philippines, aiming to strengthen their domestic manufacturing and agricultural sectors. As for inflation, a weaker peso can indeed drive it up as imported goods become more expensive. However, moderate inflation is indicative of a healthy, growing economy and isn't necessarily alarming, provided it stays within the target ranges set by central banks like the Banco Central Not Pilipinas. Even a certain level of inflation can stimulate economic activity, prompting consumers to buy sooner and businesses to invest and expand. Hence, it isn't an outright economic menace. Now, on to why the Philippine peso has depreciated recently. This occurrence is due to a complex interplay of international and domestic factors. Globally, the strength of the U.S. dollar, buoyed by positive economic indicators from the U.S. and changes in U.S. monetary policy, has been gaining against most currencies, including the peso. Domestically, factors such as current account deficits, where the value of imports and investments exceeds that of exports, contribute to the peso's depreciation. This leads to a higher demand for foreign currency to finance these imports and investments, resulting in an increased supply of pesos and a consequent decrease in its value. Furthermore, relatively high inflation rates in the Philippines compared to other countries can also influence the peso's depreciation. Higher inflation rates erode the relative value of a currency, which can diminish foreign investor confidence, fearing their investments will yield less in real terms. And lastly, geopolitical uncertainties, natural disasters, or global crises like the COVID-19 pandemic can all affect investor sentiment and instigate capital flight, further contributing to currency depreciation. Remember, currency exchange rates are influenced by a multitude of factors that interact with each other in various ways. Thus, it's important to see the broader picture when assessing the reasons behind the recent depreciation of the peso. Now, with that in mind, let's explore the significant benefits of a weaker currency. It tends to make a country's exports less expensive, thereby making them more attractive on the global market. This stimulates demand for Philippine goods, leading to higher production, job creation, and overall economic growth. Moreover, the Philippines is among the world's leading remittance-receiving nations, with countless Filipinos working abroad and sending money home. A weaker peso means these remittances 
convert to more pesos for the recipients, fostering local consumption and pumping more funds into the economy. Delving deeper into exports, the Philippines heavily relies on them for economic growth, with goods ranging from electronics and machinery to fruits and coconut oil. A weaker peso makes these products more affordable for foreign buyers, which in turn enhances demand and domestic production, creating jobs and raising incomes. This thriving export sector can lead to a stronger economy capable of withstanding global economic fluctuations. Turning to remittances, millions of overseas Filipino workers OFWs, in various fields send billions of dollars home annually, providing vital support for many families. A weaker peso against the currency of the OFW's host country means money sent home converts into more pesos significantly impacting lower-income households reliant on remittances. Moreover, these remittances stimulate the Philippine economy. When families receive more money, they spend more on goods and services, supporting local businesses, or possibly invest in assets like real estate or small businesses, spurring grassroots economic development. In essence, a weaker peso might increase the cost of foreign travel, but it can bring tangible benefits to the domestic economy. It reminds us that economic scenarios are rarely straightforward. So when you hear about a drop in the peso's value, remember that it's not necessarily all bad. It could be an opportunity fostering export-led growth and benefiting millions of households relying on remittances. The Philippines has emerged as a major hub for Business Process Outsourcing, or BPO, largely thanks to its educated and English-proficient workforce. The BPO industry in the country caters to an array of services, such as call centers, IT and software development, and financial services, among others. This industry caters to clients primarily from stronger economies such as the United States, Europe, and Australia. When the peso weakens, it offers an interesting dynamic for these BPO companies. They often earn revenues in stronger foreign currencies, predominantly the US dollar. With a weaker peso, these revenues increase when converted back into the local currency, enhancing profitability. This not only makes the BPO sector more profitable, but also increases its attractiveness for both domestic and foreign investors. Moreover, a booming BPO sector directly contributes to employment generation, helping to mitigate unemployment and underemployment issues in the country. Indirectly, it also stimulates economic activity, as BPO employees spend their income on various goods and services, thus boosting local businesses and the economy as a whole. Tourism is another significant contributor to the Philippine economy, and a weaker peso can serve to boost this sector as well. When the peso depreciates, it effectively makes the Philippines a more affordable destination for foreign tourists who can get more pesos for their home currency. This affordability can attract more tourists, driving up demand for various services like accommodation, food and beverage, travel and entertainment, and hence stimulate the local economy. Increased tourism can also promote cultural exchange and improve the country's international image, which in turn can foster better diplomatic relations and open doors for additional opportunities, such as trade agreements and cultural collaborations. Furthermore, a weaker peso can attract foreign investment. International companies looking to establish operations might find it more cost-effective to invest in countries with a weaker currency. These foreign investments can lead to job creation and technology transfer, further fueling the nation's economic growth. While we have highlighted the various benefits a weaker peso can bring to the Philippines, it's important to remember that these benefits do not come without certain costs. As discussed earlier, a weaker peso can make imported goods more expensive, potentially increase inflation, and reduce the global purchasing power of Philippine residents. In this light, the challenge for economic policymakers is not to achieve a particular exchange rate level, but rather to balance these competing interests 
in a way that maximizes overall economic welfare. In a globalized world, exchange rates are influenced by numerous factors, many of which are beyond the control of national policymakers. These include global commodity prices, investor sentiment, and economic policies in major countries. However, there are still policy tools available to national governments and central banks to manage the impact of exchange rate fluctuations. One key tool is monetary policy. By adjusting interest rates, the Banco Central no Pilipinas can influence the value of the peso and the level of inflation. Raising interest rates can attract foreign investment, thereby strengthening the peso but can also slow down the domestic economy. Lowering interest rates can stimulate economic activity, but they may lead to a weaker peso and higher inflation. The challenge is to strike the right Right balance. Another tool is fiscal policy. By increasing public spending or cutting taxes, the government can stimulate economic activity and offset the negative impacts of a weaker currency. However, these policies must be financed, and excessive government borrowing can lead to higher inflation and a weaker currency in the long term. Lastly, structural policies aimed at improving productivity, fostering innovation, and enhancing competitiveness can help the economy adapt to a weaker currency over the long term. For instance, investing in education and training can help workers acquire new skills and move into higher value industries. Likewise, investing in infrastructure can reduce transportation and logistics costs making local industries more competitive against imports and boosting their ability to export. The discourse on the devaluation of the Philippine peso highlights the intricacies of economic analysis. A weaker peso, contrary to initial assumptions, can be a boon in several respects. It can bolster the competitiveness of Philippine exports, increase the local value of remittances, stimulate sectors like BPOs and tourism, and draw foreign direct investments. These factors can lead to economic growth, employment creation, and overall national development. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.